The mythos of the Green Lantern lore pretty much broke the doors down in the DC Universe with Blackest Night. And it hasn't ended. Blackest Night is the event where the Black Rings arrived, and the Black Rings were directly linked to death, and all of the superheroes who had ever died were forced to become Black Lanterns. The Rings also revived a lot of recently deceased superheroes such as Aquaman and Hawkman. The Black Lanterns then tried to kill all life by reviving the White Lantern being known as Entity and killing it. Well, once Entity woke up, it inducted every superhero that the Black Lantern Corps revived as White Lanterns, and then they defeated the Black Lantern Corps. But this isn't where the story ended. The Black Lanterns were gone, and Black Hand, the connection to the Black Rings, had gone missing. And now that the White Light was alive, it decided not to leave also. The White Power Battery appeared in New Mexico, and nobody could move it. There were also 12 superheroes and villains that the Black Lanterns had revived that the White Light has kept around. Professor Zoom, Flash's enemy. Jade, the daughter of Alan Scott. Osiris, brother-in-law to Black Adam. Maxwell Lord, the man who single-handedly almost defeated the Justice League. Hawkgirl and Hawkman, both killed during the Blackest Night. Aquaman, who was murdered recently, and Martian Manhunter, who was killed during Final Crisis. Jason, aka Half a Firestorm, was also brought back, and Captain Boomerang, a villain of the Flashes. Hawk from Hawk and Dove was also brought back, and finally, and the most important, Boston Brand, aka Dead Man, was brought back to life. But why? What purpose do each of these individuals serve to the White Lantern? The White Lantern must have a purpose for them. And in fact it does, as each of them has a purpose that must be fulfilled by them. The white light is the only thing that knows why it brought these people back, and it's not exactly the most forthcoming of Lantern Lights. So let's go into each one of these stories. And first on our list, we're going to explore what Firestorm did. Ronnie Raymond was the original Firestorm, and he's been brought back. But he also killed Jason, the current Firestorm's girlfriend, when he was a Black Lantern. Ever since coming back, both Ronnie and Jason have been fused as the new Firestorm, and they apparently can't separate anymore. Since this is their problem, they head over to Dr. Stein's lab to try and find out why they can't separate, and they continue to argue about what happened when Ronnie was a Black Lantern. Every time they argue, they appear to be causing an instability in the Firestorm Matrix, and eventually they find out that the Firestorm Matrix is infected by something, and that's what's been causing the problems for them. But before Adam can do anything about it, it forcibly separates Jason and Ronnie to prevent them from finding out what's going on. And it causes a massive explosion, changing everything in the lab into table salt. Both Ronnie and Jason awake in the hospital, and Ronnie decides that he's done with this. He won't be merging with Jason ever again. But it won't be that easy. Not at all, since there is something in the Matrix that no one can explain. The next night, Ronnie gets completely drunk, and in a hurry, Jason calls Ronnie to merge into Firestorm, since for some reason, a local crane is turning into bubblegum. Well, Firestorm quickly takes care of that, but Ronnie is feeling weird, dizzy, and still hearing an odd voice in his head. Except, Jason hears it also. There's someone else in the Firestorm Matrix with them. They quickly go back to Dr. Stein, and after much experimenting, they pretty much decide that the Matrix is currently being fueled by Ronnie and Jason's emotions. If their emotions get too far out of control, it'll actually cause another Big Bang resetting and restarting the entire universe. Just as they're starting to figure this out though, an evil black hand reaches out of the Matrix. And those black hands belong to Deathstorm, the Black Lantern Firestorm who's come back. And he comes back to the physical plane and knocks out both Ronnie and Jason. He explains to Dr. Stein that he's going to cause so much turmoil between Ronnie and Jason that he'll force the end of the universe. Well, you would think that Dr. Stein would warn the boys, except that Deathstorm absorbs him so that he knows all about Ronnie and can torture Ronnie. Then, to get at Jason, Deathstorm absorbs Jason's father. To make matters worse, Deathstorm then teleports both Ronnie and Jason and himself to the location of the White Lantern power battery, where he infects it with the Black Lantern molecules and he lifts it up. Then we hear... Someone is controlling Deathstorm. Someone is telling him what to do, but what is it? Well, this someone demands that the White Lantern battery be brought to them. So Deathstorm recreates the other Black Lanterns, though it's not the real people this time, and they begin to carry the battery to their source. Well, the being who's been demanding the White Lantern is the Anti-Monitor. He senses the strength of the power of life, and he wants to add it to his own. Just at that moment, Firestorm is given his purpose, his meaning by the White Lantern. 
His purpose is to protect the white power battery until Boston Brandt can find the new guardian of the white light. And as the current guardian of the white light, Firestorm gets right over to the anti-monitor and he swoops in and picks it up. He can't allow the anti-monitor to create life to swallow and gain infinite power. He just can't allow that. They put aside their arguing, their differences, their lost loved ones. They're Firestorm. No, they're Jason and Ronnie and they need to save the day. But this is the anti-monitor and he'll just separate the two of them. The Anti-Monitor won't allow them to leave with the Lantern, not until he knows what this Lantern wants from him. Why did the Lantern revive him also? The White Lantern revived the Anti-Monitor. The Black Lanterns and their current leader Deathstorm grew aboard from all of this, and since they feed on emotions, they decide to take a shot at Jason. But the Professor who broke out of Deathstorm jumps in the way, and he gets changed into salt, perishing. Ronnie reforms with Jason and they try to use the White Lantern. It can revive the dead. It has to revive the Professor. But it can't. And it won't. But it will state, Mission accomplished. Firestorm has protected the Lantern. It destroys all of the Black Lanterns and gets Jason's father out of Deathstorm. And then it warps Firestorm to the forest. The Lantern explains that it can't bring back the Professor. He's just not important. The White Lantern got what it wanted from the Anti-Monitor, and Ronnie accepted Jason. Mission accomplished, and Dead Man steps out demanding the White Lantern. But hold that thought, because we're going to come back to this part of the story later. Let's jump over to Hawkman and Hawk Girl. They were originally an Egyptian ruler and his princess who discovered the Hawkman armor. His arch enemy hath set cursed the two of them to always find each other through reincarnation, and then die in each other's arms. Their story opens with them finding the skeletons of their first bodies. Hath said is going to use the skeletons of all of their lives to open a portal to Hawkworld, where their armor and abilities originally come from. Once they go through the portal, they go to town fighting against the forces of Queen Kai. Hawkman has been tasked with keeping Queen Kai from escaping, and Hawkgirl has been tasked with keeping Hawkman alive. They succeed in their goal, killing off Queen Kai, Hawkgirl's mother, with the help of the Star Sapphires. The Queen is then absorbed by the Star Sapphire's light and carried away. And it's over for Hawkman and Hawk Girl. Their curse has ended. With the destruction of Hath Set and Queen Kai, it is no more. Finally. Mission accomplished. Their purpose for the white light is now complete. They were needed to stop the Hawk World dilemma. That's it. Centuries of death and life and resurrection are gone. And they can finally just live their lives together as normal people with no issues or concerns. But Dead Man warps into their house, glowing with the white light. Why is he here? The ring informs them that in order to live life to its fullest, they will need to live life separately. It is what made them appreciate life. But they inform the ring that they will not be separated. Not after all of this. Not after everything that they've been through. And the ring responds, so be it. And it takes the life that it gave them, killing the two of them. Dead Man stares at the ground, demanding the ring bring them back. How can it do this? How can it kill them again? But it simply says, this is all a part of the plan. But we're not done yet. Aquaman tries to go back home to Mera. He doesn't want to go back to Atlantis. And while he's trying to get his life back in order, he joins Mera in an attempt to save the sea life from an oil rig wreck. They're successful in pulling it off and saving everything until some random woman shows up from the sea and attacks them. Who is this woman? Aquaman and Mera fight her valiantly, but eventually they need to escape and the oil rig is going to explode. And they just can't trust it anymore. They can't fight here anymore. Once they finally get away, Aquaman asks Mera what he missed. Who are these people? Are they Atlanteans? Because he noticed that they're using the same hard construct water weapons that Mera's water dimension uses. She looks to Aquaman, and it looks like she has some explaining to do. Because apparently, her original purpose in this main dimension was to kill Aquaman. She explains that she was originally sent here to assassinate the King of Atlantis, and that the portal should only be allowing one person through at a time. But as she got close to Aquaman, and got to know him, she fell in love, and she forsaked her original mission. The woman who has shown up is actually Mara's younger sister, and she's leading the Zebel Elite Guard here to finish what they started, and kill Aquaman. As he's trying to deal with this, the White Lantern speaks to him. Find him before they do. Meanwhile, Aqualad is off learning that he has the power to control the waters. And while he's doing this, Mera's sister is off recruiting Black Manta to help them find Aqualad. It's a race to see who will recruit him, Aquaman or Black Manta. 
Well, since Black Manta is his father, tracking him down was relatively easy for them. Except that Aqualad isn't exactly sure what his powers can do, who anyone is, and isn't going with anyone. And what makes him not leaving even easier is the fact that Aquaman is there to protect Aqualad. Aquaman and Black Manta fight it out, but in the end, Aquaman is the victor. They take Aqualad with them and they go on a journey to find out how they're going to close this portal and send Mara's sister back home. Well, a full-blown battle happens on the shoreline against Aquaman and the people from the Water Dimension. And during this, Aquaman loses his hand in a fight with Black Manta. But at that exact moment, Deadman pops in with the White Lantern speaking to him. Deadman wants to help! Why won't the White Light let him help? But it explains that IT opened the Bermuda Triangle, allowing Mara's people to come through so that Aquaman would have to find out the truth about Mara. So what does Aquaman do with this information? He fights. He fights for the sea. He fights to protect his friends. He fights for his life. And he fights for Mara. And she fights for him. Mara uses everything, and she moves the entire ocean against her sister. Aquaman follows up by using the sea life to push Mara's sister back, and he gives her the option, go home or die here. And that's it. Aquaman forgives, and he loves Mara. Aqualad is now with Aquaman, and he's not going with Black Manta. Everything has a happy ending. Except that Dead Man and the White Light are still here, and Dead Man begins to yell, Get away, Aquaman! I can't control it! But no one can hear him, and the White Light exclaims, Mission accomplished! Life returned. And it absorbs Aquaman back into it, ending his newfound life. John Johns, aka the Martian Manhunter, went back home to Mars almost immediately. And it is here that he finally brought water to the planet and decided to plant his first plant back on Mars. You see, John has decided that he has spent too much time on Earth and that he's neglected reviving his own planet and wants to go back to trying to save Mars. But he finds himself haunted by various memories, things that he doesn't remember doing, and he decides to get to the bottom of this. You see, part of his history is that he had false memories implanted by Dr. Erdell, and it is to help him cope with losing his entire planet. But eventually, he discovered that they were false, and he came to terms with everything that he lost. He goes to see the doctor's daughter in the form of her father, and he gives her the last moments that she never got from her father while he sorts out her memories. He needs to know what happened, and she was there. She would know. In her memories, he sees how it all began. They called something from Mars, a monster, a beast, an evil that needed to be fixed. So they worked day and night until they were able to call another being to Earth. And this time, it was the Martian Manhunter, here to be a hero. To show that not all Martians are actually bad. John Johns realizes that he's psychically linked to this other Martian, and he begins his investigation to find them. To make matters more interesting for him though, he discovers that foliage around him seems to retreat, and sometimes it even dies. So he decides to go and see his niece, Megan, to see if maybe she can help find this other green Martian. But all he finds is that she's been attacked and tied up. Once he heals her, they decide to figure out what's going on, and after digging around through Megan's memories, he realizes it's true. There is another green Martian here on Earth, and that's what attacked Megan. They also discover that there's a black hole of psychic power on Earth, and it's the new forest in Star City. While exploring the forest, though, John Johns loses control for some reason, and he goes on a rampage as a big hulking green monster. Green Arrow jumps on the scene to stop whatever this big monster is, while the white light is telling John, you need to choose life or death. While fending off Green Arrow, John is trying his best to regain control, and with the white light speaking to him, he does. And the white light gives him his mission. He needs to destroy a forest, but not this one. He must destroy the forest on Mars. On Mars? He has a moment with the Green Arrow where he sorts out his thoughts and then he realizes he was given his life back for a reason and it wasn't to hide away on Mars. But what is his purpose? First things first, John needs to see what the white light is talking about with a forest on Mars. And oh boy, is this amazing. There's a lush green forest on Mars and he can feel something else here with him on Mars. The other Martian. The Martian woman, Decay. She is apparently a psychopathic woman who wants to repopulate Mars with John Johns. She joins minds with Johns and tries to give him what he wants. 
a family, a life, and a Mars that's populated. But John doesn't want to fight for the fake. John fights for his friends, his world, his life. John fights for life, and John will not fight for the lie that she has put into his mind. Their fight continues onward, and she fights to try and convince John to stay and fight for Mars, help her repopulate Mars. But he tells her that she's a liar. There's no baby, there's no family, and there is no more Mars. If she wants to feel a planet, to feel a plant's life, she can feel what it is to defend a planet, then she can take John's thoughts and feel Earth. But that's not enough. John knows that there's only one way to ensure that she's defeated, and that is to carry her to the sun himself. That's what he does. He carries her there. With the heat of the sun burning off his face, he will not let another Martian harm his friends, not his family, not his Earth, and he will defend it to the very end. And with that, he burns up with decay, ending both of their lives. But this wasn't the White Light's plan. It still needs John, and it announces a mission accomplished, and it gives its life back to him, turning him into a White Lantern so that he can fly away from the sun. And it tells him, John, choose your home. Choose between Mars and Earth now. John chooses Earth, and upon landing, he runs into Dead Man, wearing the White Ring. The ring states that the Earth accepts John, and it absorbs him as it has with the others. Dead Man, once again, stands there in disbelief. So what is the ring's plan? Why would it restore everyone's life, only to take it all away once they finally come to peace? Well, we have one more story to tell. Dead Man was revived along with everyone else. But unlike everyone else, he was never a superhero who was alive and enjoyed his life. He was a spirit who was basically a superhero and hasn't been alive for centuries. Well, now he's alive again, and he's the one wearing the white ring. Dead Man begins his journey by going to his own old grave and trying to decide, what should Boston Brand do? Well, before Boston can decide what to do, the ring has its own ideas. It wants to live. It wants to experience life. And it has chosen the only man who doesn't know how to experience life to teach it. Boston Brand, help me live. He finds himself invisible once again and he teleports to Mera and Aquaman to see them again. But why? And then he finds himself teleported to the Anti-Monitor in deep space. Wait, the Anti-Monitor? Boston rather panicky says to the ring, why did you bring me here if you want me to live? And the ring says, to fight. So Boston uses the ring and he hits the anti-monitor with everything. And of course, it does nothing. He asks why he's here. Is it to stop the anti-monitor? And the ring simply tells him, no. Then he falls. He falls through space, confused, and he exclaims, I'm not used to staying alive. Wait, is that the point? The ring seems to have gotten its point across and it warps him back to Earth. That's it. The ring wants Boston to fight for his life. He needs to experience life. So the ring warps him to some girl's room. A girl who turns out to be Dove from Hawk and Dove. Well, if Dove changes, Hawk changes too. And he shows up to take care of Dove's intruder. They quickly resolve what's going on. And the first thing that they do is try to see if Boston can revive the dead. While it doesn't work on the original Dove, they do try it on Holly, the current Dove sister. And she rises as a black lantern. But then she vanishes as quickly as she rose. It was all on their heads, and the ring was warning them, do not revive the dead. The ring then warps Boston again to the location of the actual White Lantern, where he changes into White Lantern Dead Man. The being who has been talking to everyone finally gives itself a name. I am the Entity, and I am dying. You will need to find my replacement, Boston Brandt. This is it. This is when everybody heard their orders from the white light and their purpose, its master plan was given to Boston Brand. There are others also, but they have their own purposes. Everyone has a purpose that the white light has chosen to give to its people. The ring tells Boston that the life it gave to people is a gift and if a replacement isn't chosen, it will take this gift back. Boston Brand, you will find its replacement. Well, guess who recently returned from his time travel adventure? Batman. Dead Man arrives and talks to Batman and explains who he is and that Batman is the chosen replacement by Boston Brand for the being of life. And he hands Batman the ring rather forcibly. The light goes through Batman? And then the entity speaks to Boston Brand again. You saw me as a chore, Boston. I chose you because you were dead and you were pure. And you chose poorly. Batman is not the replacement and the ring allows Boston to get shot and die as punishment for pawning off the ring as a chore. His entire life flashes before his eyes. 
How could he do this? He was given a second chance to live his life, to experience what life had, and he squandered it. He tried to take the easy way out. That was a mistake, and he knows that now. He doesn't want to be a spirit anymore. He wants to live. He wants his second chance. And the ring grants it, again. Boston Brand, you will get one more chance. Find a replacement for the entity, experience life, and find life. And Boston Brand begins his third chance by experiencing love. He lives his life. He eats cheeseburgers every morning. He visits his grandfather, and he experiences everything that he ever missed. This is what the ring wanted. Boston Brand, you need to enjoy your life. And by enjoying life, you charge the ring. And once it reaches 100%, it's time for Boston to go. The ring has its power, and it's taking back the lives that it gave. It starts with Hawkman and Hawk Girl, and Boston stands in disbelief as it kills them. Then the ring takes back Aquaman's life. What did Dead Man do? He was doing what the ring wanted. Then it absorbs John Johns back into the earth. Then it teleports him to Firestorm, who's standing in the forest in Star City. And Dead Man runs in there yelling, Give me the lantern, Firestorm, before the white ring takes you too. It's all coming together. The white light's plans for everybody. The white light explains that there is a new threat, a threat that's been awakened by Necron, the Black Lantern entity. When he attacked this world, he contaminated it with his presence, and that presence is now waking up as the Dark Avatar. Yes, Necron infested Swamp Thing with the Black Lantern powers, and it's now waking up to destroy the world, to corrupt the entire world. And the only safe place is this force that the white light has risen in Star City. But the light has a master plan, and that's what all of this has been working towards. The light begins to summon the elementals. Air, fire, water, and earth. Firestorm is the fire. John Johns is the earth. Hawkman and Hawk Girl, they're the air. And Aquaman is the water. They were revived so that they can settle whatever they needed to and defend the white light. And Boston Brand, Dove, and Hawk are to remain and guard the white light's tree of life. The final battle begins with the Black Lantern Swap Thing attempting to decay the world and the elementals defending it. But that won't be enough. The Earth needs its ultimate savior, the one who can stop this now. And that's what's underneath the Tree of Life. Alex Holland wakes from the dead, and the light explains who Alex Holland was. He was the scientist that created Swamp Thing. The light sucks up all four elementals into Alex Holland to help revive him, and the light explains. Boston was chosen to host the light because he was pure. He was not connected to his body and therefore never tainted by Necron when he made the Black Lanterns. The Light resurrected everyone to stave off this attack. But now, Alex Holland needs to become Swamp Thing for real. Not his memories in the old Swamp Thing, but this time he needs to be the Swamp Thing. And then the Light speaks to Captain Boomerang. Throw the Boomerang at Dove. Throw it, Captain. The Ring continues explaining that for Alex Holland to rejoin the world of the living, somebody needs to die. He has our four elementals in him. But now he needs life force so that he can come back to life. And with that, Captain Boomerang throws the boomerang at Dove. And Hawk jumps in the way, but he fails. And the boomerang is going to go for Dove and it's going to kill her. It's going to take her life to revive Alex Holland. Except that Boston Brand takes a leap. He enjoyed his life. He got to experience love. He got to experience living one last time. And now he gives his life to save Dove and bring back Alex Holland. He says his goodbyes to Dove and thanks her for showing him what life really is. This brings back Swamp Thing, and it states that the green will not become corrupted. Swamp Thing needs to fix this. Swamp Thing protects his planet. All of it, everything that has happened was leading up to this, the final fight. Swamp Thing uses all the power that has been given to him and he easily destroys the evil Black Lantern Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing then gives a proper gravesite to Boston Brand to honor what he gave up for everything. But Dead Man isn't gone for good. The light explains that he's still needed as Dead Man. No one will see or hear him again, and he will go back to being an aimless spirit trying to help. It's not fair, screams Dead Man as he floats away. It's not fair, after everything he got to experience for it to just take it away like this. All of the other heroes revived once again, except for Hot Girl. She remains heir, and everyone else served their purpose, except for Hank Hall. Professor Zoom released Barry Allen from the Speed Force. Jade balanced the darkness in her brother, 
Osiris freed the goddess of nature. Maxwell Lord prevented the event of Kingdom Come from happening. Captain Boomerang threw the boomerang. And Hank Hall was supposed to catch that boomerang. But he failed. And that's it. No one's really sure what they should do now. Swamp Thing revives the entire forest, and he fades back into the forest to protect it. And the White Lantern, it fades away with its purpose completed, ending brightest day. Hey guys, Comic Story in here, and Jason, and thank you so much for watching that last video. If you want more content just like that, make sure you hit subscribe, because we come out with videos every other day, practically. And if you really did enjoy it, you could always give it a like, and in response to that, it's morphin' time, Jason. Uh, Dead Ranger! Uh, Chocolate Thunder! That's, that's not a Power Ranger. Chocolate Thunder Power Ranger! We'll take it. <laughs>